Alexis de Tocqueville, that great perceiver of our early democracy, said that history is a gallery of pictures in which there are few originals and many copies. Through cyber feminism, manifest revanchism, the sea inside the compass, we can no longer say, this is a picture I made. This is the place I wound up. Regardless of one's distance from the Mayflower, the mists must forever remain in an imbricated retry button, holding in desperation onto characteristics, content, enduring understandings. To take any given body of work seriatim is navigation, not territory. For in that scenario, one becomes so free they fall down, and we are driven to create a kind of Kanban board to keep up with all of our other Kanban boards. American life is the multiplication of psyche into a drop sawn pitched into a whirling cone that approaches us with all the tenderness of a Moscow ballet instructor. My paintings are about the quest for the thirst for knowledge. So what pretends flight into this ambiguous stream of cloud called neoliberalism is nothing but catachresis. You can state that artists need to create more exhibitions and you've made a fine substitution, but where do I situate such a claim? On what spectrum accountable? Am I looking at a kind of fireworks in the snow, a firefly trapped inside a guitar? Post hoke ergo propter hoke. You can't start at Plymouth Rock with any sort of nationalistic aplomb. Much further north, French fishermen built temporary docks to reap cod in the Gulf of St. Lawrence, watched their structures swallowed up by the tides and destroyed by ice, then rebuilt the next year. They worked alone, recursive, without their families, drawing upon abundance. They didn't give a fuck all about Europe only cod quantity incarcerated in their ephemeral traps. Is that a description of painting? Or you can describe that particular endeavor from Chauvy to the present as a frenzy between trying to make a psychic map of whatever idealism that has become trapped between a wholly imaginary cartography and navigation. It's a hopeful sailor's voyage down memory's twisted alleys and also just doodling with rigging only half understood upon any given morning. Nothing that can't be completely explained in a three minute video tutorial by a silicon superstar with an electronic pen. So why take all the time and administration to fake one's death ad nauseum? Why sit there in the chamber listening to the oversight committee drone on about the evidence until you've exhausted every entertainment possibility your phone can offer? We know that every image is both a witness and an arbiter. The point is exclusion. It is what so many simple-minded assholes with their own means of classifying you out of their tournaments fail to grasp. I want to stop with my own musket loaded at my side, undergoing a totally new business model and say loudly that this is not for you. I'm hiding it all from you. Peel back the layers, open a package of Swedish made band-aids you bought for a dollar at Ikea and heal your wounds. This is not for you. But then who? I'm sitting on the bank looking out over the cold gulf, spitting at those who came before me, sawing down their fir trees from the base and gluing them onto supports with plastic in an iteration so similar to their splintered winter docks, migrating from one ruin to the next, floating the timber down the river and into the cities that don't look like cities, but are much more so than the old ones. A fine continental theory and mirror of that migration into the locked castle of conscience. Moving from the surfaces and the history up through the atmosphere, through the dark trajectory, and down again to the frozen, rusty desert, and into the bunker away from the dust storms and the radiation where the robots above pick through the billions of years of rubble sitting there beneath the cold gulf, making paintings of something I never saw.